I'm glad you could join us. Go ahead and stab the like button and stick around for the next untold story. In the late fall of 2020, Ethan Carter and his longtime friend Mike Johnson set out for a weekend hunting trip in the dense forests of northern Maine. Both men were experienced hunters and had been navigating these woods since they were young. This time, they were after white-tailed deer, drawn by the thrill of the hunt and the calm of the wilderness. As they ventured deeper into the forest, a thick fog began to roll in, uncharacteristic for that time of year and dense enough to dampen even the smallest sounds, casting an eerie silence over the woods. The two men set up camp near an old, dried-up riverbed, planning to start their hunt at dawn when the deer were most active. The night passed unevently with stories and laughter around the campfire. However, as the first light of dawn broke through the trees, an unsettling feeling settled over the camp. The fog had not lifted and, if anything, had grown denser, obscuring visibility beyond a few feet. Ignoring the uneasy feeling, Ethan and Mike grabbed their gear and headed in separate directions to increase their chances of spotting a deer. They agreed to meet back at the camp by noon, regardless of their success. Ethan walked silently through the forest, his rifle in hand, eyes straining through the mist. Hours passed, and he saw no sign of deer, or any wildlife for that matter. It was as if the forest was holding its breath. The silence was broken only by the occasional drip of moisture falling from the leaves. As the morning wore on, Ethan realized he had wandered further than he intended. Deciding to head back, he turned around and retraced his steps, but the landmarks he expected to see weren't there. The fog made it difficult to tell if he was even heading in the right direction. A rising panic began to set in as he realized he might be lost. Attempting to calm himself, Ethan decided to use his hunting whistle, hoping Mike would hear it and realize something was wrong. He blew on the whistle three sharp bursts, the standard signal for help. But the dense fog seemed to swallow the sound and there was no response. Ethan continued to walk, trying to find anything that looked familiar. As he moved, he thought he heard footsteps following him, soft sounds muffled by the fog. He stopped, listening hard, but the sound stopped too. When he began walking again, so did the footsteps. Fear prickling at the back of his neck, Ethan quickened his pace, and the footsteps kept pace with his. He didn't want to look back, afraid of what he might see. He tried calling out, Who's there? But received no response, just the echo of his own voice through the trees. After what felt like hours, Ethan stumbled upon a clearing. In the center, an old hunting cabin, long abandoned, stood silently. It seemed like a refuge from the unsettling pursuit. Approaching the cabin, Ethan noticed the door was slightly ajar. He pushed it open, the hinges groaning loudly in the quiet forest. Inside, the cabin was shrouded in shadows, the air stale and thick with the smell of decay. Ethan stepped inside, hoping to find some clue to his location, or at least a place to rest and regroup. As he explored the small space, he noticed something unsettling, a fresh set of footprints in the dust on the floor, leading to the back of the cabin, but not returning. The story of Ethan Carter, lost in the foggy woods of northern Maine, was far from over. As he stood in the old cabin, the sense of being followed still lingering, he realized that the forest might hold more secrets and dangers than he had ever imagined. What lay ahead in the back of the cabin could hold the key to his escape or deepen the nightmare of his lost hunting trip. Ethan hesitated at the threshold of the back room of the cabin, his heart pounding in his chest. The fresh footprints suggested someone or something had recently been there, and the possibility of not being alone in the cabin sent a shiver down his spine. He contemplated heading back into the fog, but knew he had little chance of finding his way without some sense of direction. Determined to confront whatever lay ahead, he pushed the door open, stepping into the dimly lit room. The back room was cramped and cluttered with old hunting gear, broken furniture, and stacks of moldy books. Cobwebs hung thick in the corners, and dust motes floated in the few beams of light piercing through the boarded-up windows. As Ethan's eyes adjusted to the gloom, he noticed a small, makeshift bed in one corner the blanket slightly crumpled as if recently used. A sense of urgency gripped him as he realized he might not be alone. He called out, Hello? Is anyone here? His voice echoed slightly in the small space, but there was no response. 
only the oppressive silence of the cabin. His breath visible in the cold air, Ethan searched the room for any signs of who might be sharing this eerie refuge. On the small table, he found a hunter's logbook, its pages yellowed and the handwriting shaky. Flipping through the pages, he found entries detailing sightings of deer, notes on weather patterns, and disturbingly, towards the latest entries, frantic notes about feeling watched, about shadows moving in the fog, and an overwhelming sense of dread. The last entry was dated just a week prior. It ended abruptly, with a smear of ink, as if the writer had been startled or rushed. Ethan's skin crawled as he read the final words. It's outside. I can hear it. It knows I'm here. I can't stay silent any longer. Going to make a run for it at dawn. The realization that he might not be dealing with just being lost, but something far more sinister, made Ethan's situation feel even more desperate. He decided it was time to leave the cabin, despite the fog and the unknown dangers outside. He couldn't shake the feeling that staying would be a grave mistake, potentially as dangerous as facing the obscure presence in the woods. As he stepped back into the main room of the cabin to gather his backpack, the chill seemed to deepen, a cold that seemed to seep into his bones. He felt an overwhelming urge to look over his shoulder, but every time he did, there was nothing but the empty, silent cabin. With his backpack slung over his shoulder, Ethan cautiously opened the cabin door, peering into the fog. The world outside seemed motionless, the fog as thick as ever. He took a deep breath, stepped outside, and carefully closed the door behind him. The silence of the forest was suddenly broken by a distant scream, a human scream, filled with terror and pain. It was coming from the direction of the campsite where he had split up with Mike. Heart racing, Ethan forgot his own fear for a moment and started running towards the sound, his thoughts now focused only on finding Mike and ensuring his friend's safety. The story of Ethan Carter, lost and haunted in the depths of the main woods, was far from over. As he ran through the fog, every shadow seemed to shift, every sound a threat. The forest held its breath once more, watching as Ethan plunged deeper into its dark heart. Ethan raced through the dense fog, the eerie silence punctuated only by the occasional echo of his own footsteps. The underbrush scratched at his legs, and the branches snagged his jacket as he pushed his way through the woods, driven by the chilling scream that had shattered the quiet of the forest. His mind raced with possibilities of what might have happened to Mike, and with each possibility, his dread deepened. He stumbled into a small clearing and paused, trying to catch his breath and listen for any sounds that might guide him. The fog was slowly beginning to lift, allowing faint beams of morning light to filter through the trees. It was in this ghostly half-light that Ethan saw it, Mike's rifle lying on the ground, abandoned, the stock partially buried under a pile of wet leaves. A sense of panic overtook him as he picked up the rifle, finding it still loaded. Mike would never leave his weapon behind voluntarily, especially not loaded and ready to fire. Ethan called out, Mike! Mike, where are you? But the forest returned only silence. He moved forward, deeper into the woods, following what appeared to be signs of a struggle. Broken branches, disturbed earth, and here and there, drops of blood that had begun to darken against the forest floor. The trail led him to the edge of a steep ravine, the bottom obscured by the lingering fog. As Ethan approached the edge, peering down into the murky depths, he heard it again, a faint pained groan coming from below. Without hesitation, he began to climb down the ravine, using tree roots and rocks as handholds, desperate to find Mike. Halfway down, Ethan lost his footing, sliding several feet before managing to grab a sturdy root. His heart pounded as he clung to the earth, regaining his composure before continuing the descent. The groan had not sounded again, and the silence was now complete, as if the forest itself was holding its breath. Finally reaching the bottom of the ravine, Ethan found Mike, badly injured but alive, his leg appeared broken, and his face was pale from pain and blood loss. I tried to climb out, after it happened. Mike gasped, his voice weak. It came out of nowhere, Ethan. It wasn't an animal, I swear. It was like a shadow, like something that didn't belong here. Ethan tried to calm him, checking the wound on Mike's leg and using his first aid kit to bandage it as best he could. We're going to get out of here, he assured Mike though he himself wasn't sure how they would manage the climb back up. As he supported Mike to his feet, trying to figure out their next move, a chilling wind swept through the ravine. The trees above rustled violently, 
and a dark shape darted through the peripheral of Ethan's vision. Just a shadow, yet unmistakably sentient. Ethan turned toward the movement, Mike's rifle ready in his hands. The forest fell silent once more, a suffocating, pressing silence. Then, without warning, the dark shape emerged from the shadows directly in front of them. It was indeed no animal Ethan or Mike had ever seen, large and amorphous, with gleaming eyes that reflected no light but seemed to absorb it, enveloping them in darkness. Mike screamed. A sound cut abruptly short as the shadow enveloped him, pulling him away into the darkness. Ethan fired the rifle, but it was useless. The shadow, unharmed and undeterred, turned toward Ethan, and as it advanced, the last thing Ethan saw were the eyes. Deep, endless pits of despair, pulling him into an abyss from which there was no escape. The search party found the campsite two days later, the fire long cold. Of Ethan and Mike, there was no sign, only an unsettling stillness and a feeling of sorrow that lingered in the clearing. Their disappearance remained a mystery, another dark legend of the northern Maine woods, whispered about in the glow of campfires by those who dared to tread in the forest's deep and ancient heart. In late October of 2019, Daniel Harper, an experienced hunter and former Marine, set out on a solo hunting trip in the dense woods of the Allegheny National Forest in Pennsylvania. The area, known for its vast wilderness and abundant game, was a place Daniel had visited many times before, often returning with stories of nature's quiet beauty and the thrill of the hunt. This trip, however, was different. Daniel was seeking not just the solitude of the forest, but also relief from personal grief after losing his wife earlier that year. The forest, with its timeless cycle of life and death, seemed the right place to reflect and heal. He arrived at his usual campsite, an isolated clearing that offered a strategic view of a deer path and nearby water source. After setting up camp, Daniel spent the remaining daylight hours scouting the area, familiarizing himself with the changes since his last visit. As dusk fell, he returned to his tent cooked a simple meal, and settled in for the night, the familiar sounds of the forest lulling him into a restless sleep. The next morning, under a gray, overcast sky, Daniel set out with his rifle. The forest was unusually quiet, the normal chatter of wildlife eerily absent. As he made his way through the dense undergrowth, a dense fog began to roll in, blanketing the woods in a thick, oppressive mist. Visibility dropped, and the forest's usual landmarks became shadowy figures difficult to distinguish. Unnerved by the silence and fog, Daniel decided to head back to camp, but his surroundings had become disorienting. What should have been a straightforward walk turned into a confusing trek through unfamiliar terrain. The more he walked, the more he felt as though he was moving in circles. When he checked his GPS, he found it malfunctioning, its screen flickering erratically before going blank. As he tried to retrace his steps, Daniel heard a snap behind him, Whirling around, rifle at the ready, he saw nothing but the dense white fog. His heart racing, he called out, challenging the unseen presence, but only his echo answered back. Shaking off a growing sense of dread, he continued walking, but the feeling of being watched grew stronger. Suddenly, out of the mist, a figure appeared. It was a man, disheveled, with wild eyes and an unkempt beard. He was dressed in ragged clothes, carrying what looked like a handmade bow. Daniel lowered his rifle slightly, not wanting to appear threatening to a fellow hunter, and called out a greeting. The man did not respond. He just stared at Daniel, his expression unreadable. Feeling uneasy, Daniel asked if the man was okay, if he needed help. The man continued to stare for a long moment before turning and walking back into the fog without a word. Confused and a little shaken, Daniel watched him disappear. Something about the man felt off, but Daniel couldn't pinpoint what it was. With the encounter lingering in his mind, Daniel finally found his way back to camp. He decided to stay put for the remainder of the day, hoping the fog would lift. However, as hours passed, not only did the fog remain, but a subtle, unnerving whisper seemed to weave through the trees, voices that couldn't be fully understood. As night fell, the whispers grew louder, and Daniel felt the isolation of the woods more acutely than ever. His thoughts returned to the strange man in the fog, wondering who he was and why he was out here, alone and seemingly lost. The story of Daniel Harper's hunting trip was far from over. 
The night promised more revelations, and with each passing hour, the forest seemed to close in, harboring secrets just out of sight, watching, waiting. As darkness enveloped the campsite, Daniel's sense of unease deepened. The whispers in the woods had grown into an indistinct murmur, as if a crowd were gathered just beyond the range of his vision, discussing him in hushed tones. He tried to dismiss it as the wind or a trick of his frazzled nerves, but the feeling of being observed, possibly judged, persisted. Determined not to succumb to fear, Daniel kept his rifle within arm's reach and built up the campfire, hoping its light and warmth would ward off the cold dampness of the fog and whatever might be lurking within it. He roasted some food over the fire, ate distractedly, and then tried to focus on mundane tasks to keep his mind occupied. Despite his efforts, his eyes frequently darted to the opaque wall of fog that surrounded his campsite. Once, he thought he saw a shadow move, quick and low to the ground, just at the edge of the firelight. He grabbed his rifle and pointed it toward the movement, his voice stern as he called out a challenge. Again, there was no response, only the shifting murmur of the forest and the crackle of the fire. Unable to sleep and unwilling to let down his guard, Daniel spent the night sitting by the fire, his eyes scanning the darkness, his ears straining to decipher the eerie sounds around him. As the hours crawled by, the temperature dropped, and the fog seemed to press closer, denser, as if it were slowly suffocating the clearing. Just before dawn, when the blackness seemed most oppressive, a sudden sharp cry, a human scream, shattered the silence, coming from the direction deeper into the woods. It was filled with such terror and pain that Daniel stood up instinctively, grabbing his rifle. His first thought was of the disheveled man he'd encountered earlier. Could he be in trouble? Or was it someone else, perhaps another lost soul wandering these cursed woods? With no plan but driven by a mix of fear and a compulsion to help, Daniel stepped into the fog, following the direction from which the scream had emanated. His flashlight barely penetrated the mist, and the ground underfoot was slick with moisture and fallen leaves, making every step a risk. As he moved away from the safety of the firelight, the murmur of the forest grew into discernible voices, speaking a language he couldn't understand. It was as if the woods themselves were alive, whispering secrets about this intruder in their midst. Daniel's heart pounded in his chest, each beat echoing loudly in the silent fog. He had walked for what felt like miles when he stumbled upon a scene that froze him in his tracks. There, in a small clearing, was the man he had seen before, kneeling on the ground, his head thrown back in a posture of despair. Surrounding him were figures cloaked in shadows, their forms blurred and shifting as if made of the fog itself. They were chanting in a rhythmic, hypnotic tone, their voices intertwining with the whispers of the woods. Daniel aimed his rifle at them, his voice hoarse as he demanded they step away from the man. The figures turned towards him slowly, their faces obscured and indistinct. As they moved, the temperature seemed to drop further and Daniel's breath came out in visible puffs of white vapor. The figure's eyes, if they were eyes, gleamed in the dim light, reflecting no light but seeming to glow from within. Frozen with indecision, Daniel watched as the figures continued their eerie chant, stepping closer to him and the man. The story of Daniel Harper's hunting trip had taken a dark turn into the realm of the inexplicable, each step deeper into the forest drawing him further into a nightmare that threatened to engulf him completely. As the figures converged, the forest held its breath, waiting for the dawn to lift the veil of fog and reveal the consequences of his intrusion. The figures advanced slowly, their movements synchronized and eerily fluid, like dancers moving to the rhythm of an unseen conductor. The chanting grew louder, more insistent, as if they were summoning something ancient and malevolent from the depths of the forest itself. Daniel's hands shook as he aimed his rifle at the nearest figure, his finger trembling on the trigger. Stay back, he shouted, his voice cracking in the cold air. But the figure seemed unfazed by his words or his weapon. As they drew closer, the fog around them swirled violently, as though stirred by their passage. Their faces remained shrouded in shadow, featureless and haunting. <laughs> the disheveled man on the ground suddenly looked up at Daniel, his eyes wild with fear and pleading. Run, he croaked, a desperate garbled whisper that chilled Daniel to the bone. But before Daniel could react, the man was swallowed up by the figures, disappearing into the mass of shadows as if he had never been there at all. Panic surged through Daniel's veins, his survival instincts screaming at him to flee. He turned and ran, stumbling through the underbrush, 
his heart pounding in his ears. The chanting of the figures followed him, a haunting melody that seemed to echo through the trees, growing louder with each step he took. He ran without direction, the forest around him a blur of dark shapes and swirling fog. Branches whipped at his face, roots tripped his feet, but fear propelled him forward, away from the nightmare behind him. Just as he thought he might escape, a root caught his ankle, sending him sprawling to the ground. Scrambling to his knees, Daniel turned back to see the figures emerging from the mist, their forms clearer now, more solid and terrifying. They were no longer just shadows. They had substance, and their eyes glowed with a sickly, unnatural light. The chanting stopped, replaced by a deep, resonant hum that vibrated through the ground. Frozen in fear, Daniel could only watch as the figures surrounded him, their faces inches from his. What he saw then would haunt him for the rest of his life. Faces not human, but monstrous, twisted in expressions of hatred and hunger, their eyes bottomless pits of darkness. As they closed in, Daniel felt a coldness seep into his bones, a darkness enveloping his mind. He tried to scream, but no sound came out. He tried to move, but his body wouldn't obey. The last thing he saw before the darkness consumed him completely was the morning light finally breaking through the trees a cruel reminder of the day he would never see. When the search party found Daniel's campsite days later, it was untouched, his belongings scattered as if he had left in a hurry. Of Daniel Harper, there was no trace, no sign of a struggle, no footprints leading away. He had vanished into the fog, swallowed by the forest that he had loved, leaving behind only a story whispered among hunters and hikers, a tale of shadows that chant in the mist, and the hunter who stepped into their circle, never to return. In late November of 2022, Marcus Allen and his brother-in-law, Jeremy Stone, decided to go deer hunting in the thick woods of northern Minnesota, near the Boundary Waters. Both men were experienced hunters and familiar with the wilderness, but neither was prepared for the turn of events that would transform their routine hunting trip into a fight for survival. On the first day, they set out early from their small cabin with high hopes. The crisp morning air was filled with the promise of snow, and the recent tracks in the fresh dusting suggested a lot of deer activity. The two split up to cover more ground, agreeing to meet back at a designated spot by dusk. As Marcus ventured deeper into the woods, he felt a sense of unease that he couldn't shake. The forest, usually teeming with the sounds of wildlife, was eerily quiet, the silence punctuated only by the occasional creaking of heavy branches under the weight of the snow. The quiet was unsettling, but Marcus pressed on, attributing his nerves to the overcast sky and the oppressive feeling of an impending snowstorm. Around midday, Marcus heard a strange noise, a kind of whistling sound, high-pitched and unnatural, that seemed to come from all directions. He stopped, scanning the dense brush, but saw nothing. The sound continued intermittently, fading as he moved toward it, then appearing again behind him. Confused and increasingly alarmed, Marcus decided to head back to the meeting point earlier than planned, worried that the weather was about to turn or that something was wrong in the woods. As he retraced his steps, the snow began to fall more heavily, the wind picking up and whipping the flakes into thick curtains that obscured his vision. The familiar landmarks he had noted on his way out now appeared distorted and unfamiliar, shrouded in the growing blizzard. Realizing he might be lost, Marcus tried to call Jeremy on his walkie-talkie, but the only response was static. Panic began to set in as the light started to fade, swallowed by the heavy clouds and falling snow. Marcus knew he had to find shelter and build a fire or risk hypothermia. He found a somewhat sheltered spot under a large spruce tree and started to gather wood, his hands numb and clumsy with cold. As he was about to strike a match, the high-pitched whistling sound returned louder than before, and this time it was accompanied by a rustling in the bushes nearby. Marcus turned towards the noise, his heart racing, and through the swirling snow, he glimpsed what looked like a figure standing just at the edge of visibility. It was too large to be a deer, and too still to be another hunter. Frightened but desperate for answers, Marcus called out, Who's there? Jeremy, is that you? The figure didn't move or respond. Marcus squinted trying to make out details through the snow, but just as he took a step forward, the figure vanished, as if it had melted into the snow. Now, with darkness setting in and the storm intensifying, Marcus realized he was dealing with more than just a lost path. 
The story of his hunting trip was far from over, and the mysterious figure in the snow might hold the key to his survival, or something far worse. As the cold deepened and the whistling resumed, Marcus understood that the night ahead would be a test of all his wilderness skills, and perhaps his courage against the inexplicable. Huddled beneath the spruce, Marcus hastily struck his match, his hands shaking as the flame flickered perilously close to his fingers before finally catching on the small pile of tinder he had gathered. The fire took hold slowly, the wet wood hissing and popping as the flame fought to survive in the driving snow. Each snap and crackle of the firewood seemed unnaturally loud in the enveloping silence of the snowstorm. With the fire providing a meager source of warmth and light, Marcus tried to gather his thoughts. The eerie figure he had seen could have been a trick of the light, his mind playing shadows against the snow. He tried to convince himself of this, but the persistent whistling sound sliced through the howling wind, challenging his rational explanations. The night deepened, the snow fell harder, and Marcus knew he was in for a long, cold vigil. He couldn't risk moving through the blizzard to find the cabin or Jeremy. His best chance was to stay put, maintain the fire, and wait for the storm to pass. Throughout the night, he fed the small fire, his eyes darting nervously to the shadowy edges of the firelight, half expecting to see the mysterious figure reappear. Every so often, the whistling would return, now seemingly closer, then moving away, a taunting, haunting melody that seemed almost human, but distorted, as if carried through water. Marcus tried once more to reach Jeremy on the walkie-talkie, his voice barely above a whisper, not wanting to attract unwanted attention from whatever might be out there. Again, there was no response, just static that seemed to merge with the sounds of the storm. As dawn approached, the intensity of the storm began to lessen, the snow falling more gently now, the wind dying down to a mournful moan. Exhausted but unable to sleep, Marcus stood and stretched, his body stiff from tension and cold. He decided to use the early morning light to try and locate the cabin, or at least find some sign of Jeremy. He doused the fire, packed his gear, and set out into the dim light of dawn. The landscape transformed into a white blanket, smooth and undisturbed, except for the deep impressions of his own boots around the now dead fire. The whistling had stopped, and the silence felt oppressive, heavy with unspoken threats. Marcus trudged through the snow, following what he hoped was the direction back to the cabin. His mind replayed the previous day's events, trying to piece together a map from memory. His focus was so intent on his path that he almost missed it. A fresh set of footprints in the snow, not his own, leading away from the area of his makeshift camp. Heart pounding, he followed the tracks, which appeared human but were oddly spaced, as if whatever had made them was struggling or injured. The tracks meandered, sometimes circling back on themselves, creating a confusing, chaotic pattern. They led deeper into the woods, away from any path Marcus recognized. Compelled by a mix of concern and a desperate need for answers, Marcus followed the tracks. The forest seemed to watch him, the trees whispering secrets he couldn't understand. As he rounded a thick grove of pines, the tracks abruptly ended and Marcus halted, scanning the area for any sign of what had made them. It was then he heard it, a soft, whimpering cry, like that of a child, coming from a nearby thicket. The sound was so unexpected, so out of place in the desolate woods, that Marcus felt his skin crawl. With a mixture of fear and resolve, he stepped toward the sound, his hand on his rifle, ready for whatever he might find. The story of Marcus Allen, lost and alone in the snow-covered wilderness, was far from over. His discovery in the woods would only deepen the mystery and danger of his hunting trip gone wrong, pulling him further into the unknown. Marcus cautiously approached the thicket, every sense alert. The soft crying continued, a pitiful sound that tugged at his heartstrings, yet sent waves of dread through his body. Parting the branches, he peered into a small clearing and froze, his breath catching in his throat. There, huddled against a tree, was a small child, no older than five or six, dressed in a thin, tattered nightgown that offered no protection against the cold. The child's skin was pale, almost translucent, and her eyes, when she looked up at Marcus, were wide and filled with an unfathomable sadness. Help me, she whispered, her voice barely audible over the rustling of the leaves. Marcus was stunned. How had a child ended up here, so far from any trail or sign of human habitation? His mind raced with possibilities, all of them sinister, 
and none offering a comforting explanation. He knew he needed to act quickly. The child needed warmth and shelter immediately. It's okay, I'm here to help you, Marcus said softly, extending his hand to her. As he helped her to her feet, the child's hand felt unnaturally cold, her grip surprisingly strong. How did you get here? Marcus asked, looking around the clearing for any sign of her tracks. But there were none, except for the ones he had made himself. The child did not respond, only stared up at him with those haunting eyes. Deciding that questions could wait until they were safe, Marcus wrapped his jacket around the child and started back toward his campsite, planning to pick up his gear and then find the quickest way out of the woods. Every so often he glanced down at the child, who never spoke, just followed his lead with an eerie calmness. As they walked, the forest around them seemed to grow darker, the trees denser. Marcus felt a growing sense of unease, as if they weren't alone. The sensation of being watched returned, stronger than before. He quickened his pace, the child keeping up silently, her steps never faltering. They hadn't gone far when Marcus felt a sudden, sharp pain in his hand, the hand holding the child's. He looked down in alarm and saw her looking up at him, not with sadness now, but with a chilling, hollow malevolence. Her grip tightened, her nails digging into his skin, and her mouth twisted into an unnatural, grotesque smile. Marcus tried to pull away, but the child's strength was overwhelming. He stumbled backward, tripping over a root and falling to the ground. The child stood over him, her form seeming to flicker and distort, blurring into something shadowy and formless, then solidifying into that of a grotesque, twisted creature, far older than her initial appearance suggested. The last thing Marcus saw was the creature bending toward him, its face contorting into a mask of terror, its eyes empty voids that seemed to consume the light around them. He screamed, but the sound was quickly muffled by the dark, dense forest. When search teams found Marcus's campsite days later, it was undisturbed, as if he had just stepped away for a moment. But of Marcus himself, there was no sign. His disappearance remained a mystery, fueling tales among locals of a cursed part of the forest, where a child's cries were sometimes heard, luring unwary travelers into the depths of the woods, never to return. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video, 